let's see, I can remember, you know, we get it started. You know, the, there was my dad, my twin brother Ryan, my bro kid brother Tom, and uh, two friends. And we started out, you know, we got ready, we were going up Hunt Trail. And Henry and I would go ahead, you know, and they were dragging, they're, you know, going pretty slow, because my younger brother was pretty small then. And uh, eventually, I asked my dad if we could go ahead because they were going too slow, and he said, okay. And uh, off we went. We were not prepared to go on that hike, and I, and I suffered for it. We saw the storm coming, and we got to have a pretty bad storm. The wind was blowing, I'll never forget that, and the temperature dropped like a rock. We jumped behind some rocks, and, uh, and you couldn't see from here to the house uh, because of the the clouds were just being packed in by the wind, and uh, it was cold, and I got cold and scared, and I left Henry, which was the stupidest thing I ever did. And I remember leaving him, and he kept telling me, don't go, don't go, you know, but I just ignored him and took off. And then I knew I was in trouble when I couldn't find him, and I lost my cool. And I remember running around and hollering and yelling and screaming, and I was scared to death. I mean, even the 12 year old I said I did a dumb thing, you know, I mean, I, I knew I was in trouble and scared. I went down over the side of the mountain for a short while and went through the pucker brush, which was quite an experience. And I didn't really get through, I had to finally crawl underneath it and came out of it and went back up to the mountain. And then started going around and came across that old trail, I remember that vividly. And not going down it, because we heard it was, uh, it was dangerous, and then I thought I could find my dad, or Henry. And then I got the idea, I'd go over the side of the mountain, and uh, went, went down, and I didn't find any trail that I thought I'd find. I went down an old avalanche slide, which uh, is not a thing to go down, and uh, got banged up pretty good, especially on one hip. I went off one boulder onto another, and, uh, and it uh, slowed me down. You know. A lot of people think Maine is just like a park, woods are a park. They're not a park. They're hard to get through it. But I decided to go down to the bottom and uh, got to the bottom and sat down next to a very, very tiny stream. And uh, to wind it up the first day, my feet began to hurt, you know, and I looked down and my sneakers were about gone. They got ripped up coming down. You know, the old time sneakers weren't very good. My feet were bleeding. And then I got tired, you know, I'd never done that. Climbed up, came back down, ran around. And I haven't done that before, you know, and went off to sleep. As I said in my scout training, I was taught, taught to follow a stream downstream and you will eventually come upon some kind of civilization. So I, that was in my mind. I'd run into somebody looking for me or I'd run into my dad. Uh, every day was like that. The only disappointing thing was when I found those other cabins and then found there was nobody in them. That was pretty frustrating and, and, and heartbreaking. I never, I never, I really never, never, it never entered my mind. Near the last day or so, I might I had a few doubts, you know, but but by that time I was just passing out and kept going and going and going, you know. I wasn't saying thinking about dying because I think if you do, you're going to sit down and you're going to die. But uh, it never just, I just always knew I would find somebody or somebody would find me. And from the top of the mountain, they told me in a straight line by the crow flies to Mr. McMoran's cabin is 35 miles. And, but the guides, when you talk to them, they said, well, you were going down blowdowns, you were going on winding streams that you were following. And that, they, they thought 80, and I said, you know, nine days on bare feet, 80, eight miles a day, I don't think so. So I said, well, maybe 50. You know, something I don't know. In fact, I didn't even know how many days I was lost until they told me. And uh, I had missed Mr. McMoran's cabin. It was nothing for 16 miles until the town of Gronso. And whether I could have gone another 16 miles, I, I don't think so. Because I was passing out and doing all kinds of stupid things. I came out with a jacket and a shirt uh, with, and a gummy sack. I never realized how big a thing it was until some years later, you know. And, uh, I, it, it was unbelievable that that many people were looking for me. They, was that noteworthy? But I'm in Maine. That's Maine people.